Ultimately, we live on a sailboat because we love to travel. And although a lot of our time is spent maintaining our floating home, we sometimes get the chance to really get to know a place. Man, this is an amazing view. Here on the island of Fayal, fire and water collide to somehow create vast landscapes of lush greenery. And the people who have carved out a living on these isolated and harsh islands have produced a very unique culture among all this rugged beauty. And although in a way this is a pit stop on our way to the Mediterranean, we're beginning to feel that these islands may be our favorite sailing destination that we've ever been to. All right, so today we have a couple of chores that we're going to do. And the first thing we are going to do is tackle the wet mattress. Ah, uh, yes. If only you could be here to experience this wonderful smell that the V-Birth has. It kind of smells as if like you were to take a large mattress, get it soaking wet, put it in a hot, small, confined space for like two weeks and just leave it there and just see what happens. So we realized that we've got a leak somewhere, salt water was getting into the V-Birth, getting onto this mattress. And so now it is time to take this bad boy out of here, give it a really good rinse and try to clean this area up. Okay, well, I think we're gonna have a problem here. So this is the hose that we use for washing the boat and filling the tanks. It's like drinking water hose. This is our inline filter. This is the attachment that we normally attach to the spigot. But I think I just realized that now that we are in European country zone, it's gonna be a different thread count. So we're gonna head down to a hardware store and see if we can find some kind of an adapter here. No matter how small a port town is, if there's a substantial number of sailboats passing through, they're going to have some kind of a marine supply store or chandlery. And it's always a fun mission to see if we can find what we need in such eclectic small shops. So that goes on the hose, connects to this. Got it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I've gotta pickle the water maker. Basically, we don't want salt water sitting in all the different components of the water maker. And in fact, we don't even want just fresh water sitting in it if we're not gonna use it for a prolonged period of time. I'm gonna add some white powder to the water that will make it not allow anything to grow inside. Finally, I also flushed the outboard engine with fresh water since we were probably not going to be using it for a while either. So we are on our way now to go sailing on an old whaling sailboat. Back in the day, the Azores were a big hub for whaling, but they did it a little bit differently. Instead of having big whaling ships that would go off for like a year or two at a time, here they would just have one person on lookout at a really high place in the hills. And if they saw a whale or a pod of whales, they'd sound the alarm and then all the townsfolk would jump into boats and row or sail out to get to the whales. These boats that we're gonna sail on are basically like replicas of the boats that they used to actually sail out to get whales. How do you say this? Maria de Concesao. Maria de Concesao. See. Si. So now they've just turned it into like a cool club and like a recreational activity. We're not super in with this crowd. We just saw them sailing one day and we're like, can we do that? <laughs> they were like, yeah, just come at this day at this time. So let's see if we can hop on one of these boats. Knowing how to rig old traditional boats like this is a skill set that has to be passed down. And it was really cool to see the older generation here teaching the younger generation how to do it and keeping that knowledge alive. She was saying they don't always get it up the first time, so it's good luck. Yeah. <laughs> so impressive how they're able to maneuver in tight yeah. quarters. So we have this rope uh -huh. because when we have to balance the boat and they say border, we have to go here and do like this and you use the rope to help you. I would in hindsight, the tall guy being forward, probably not something I'll yeah, repeat nice, again. Like, sideways <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sailing these boats felt a lot like sailing a small performance boat, like a laser, where precise weight distribution and physical balance is the only thing keeping the boat from capsizing. Except instead of just one person balancing on a really small boat, this is 12 people acting in unison. 
And if they don't move together just right as a team, these large boats will capsize, which we were told is not a super uncommon event. Yeah, so they were saying that, I mean, basically the history of these boats is that pretty much when they stopped whaling, the people that worked these boats just wanted to keep sailing them. And so they started doing inter-island regattas. So the Horta sailing team would race against the Pico team. And they've just kept racing and kept sailing ever since. I just think that is the coolest thing, that not only is this style of sailing, this kind of boat still alive, it's enthusiastically still alive. Well, we're coming back into harbor and that went by like that. Such an awesome way to end the day. Watch your head. Watch your head. Man, I mean, I've been sailing for a while now, and that was one of the coolest sailing experiences I've ever had. Ugh, we gotta do that more often. Like, when we see something cool, we're like, can we do that with you? <laughs> All right, so we are walking up to a restaurant to grab some food. It's called O Esconderijo. Mm. O Esconderijo. Mm. Oh God, Esconderijo. There we go. O Esconderijo. Yes, I did it. And uh, it looks super cool. It's supposed to be a really neat, really unique restaurant. Well, we specialize definitely on organic produce from the island Fayal. Wow. Whoa. I don't know if I've ever eaten a flower. With a fork either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good? It's really good. And it's got like a peppery aftertaste. Huh. Dude, I'm gonna live in the forest from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so in here we have potatoes, sweets, and carrots. And the purple flower is really nice like a wild onion flower. That's nuts. Next time you see a purple flower, buddy, grab just it. grab it for Eat grab it. all of them. And dessert as well. Oh my gosh. Woo. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> That's intense. Oh, this one tastes like a flower. <laughs> Man, that was so delicious. That was awesome. Benjamin was saying that uh, he's actually just started a YouTube channel where he's gonna be putting videos about the recipes that he puts together here and just generally. And so if you're curious to learn some of these really cool ways to put natural, organic food together, then check out their YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, very cool. All right, so today we are finally going to check out the island of Fayal and go on an epic island journey. Right, buddy? I think it's Fayal. Fayal. We are finally going to see Fayal. Fayalnally. So uh, we actually tried to rent a car and it turns out that this is peak peak season. There is not a single rental car on the island if you're not willing to pay like, what was it, like 300 euros a day? Yeah. But luckily our friend Joao had a spare car that we could borrow for the day. And so we were gonna head over and grab that thing and tour this beautiful green island. And Oso is ready. Okay, so where are we going here, bud? Pastelaria? Yeah, I wanna get some bread because pregnant lady needs some treats for the day. Go this way, take a right, take a right, take a left, take a left, take a right, take a right, <laughs> take a right. <laughs> and it's like three minutes away. <laughs> and it's a stick shift, which, I mean, I am not the best stick shift driver in the world. I know how to do it, but like there's a lot of hills here. This is gonna be an interesting day. Oh my God. <laughs> nice, buddy. We did it. We did it. Woo. I think this car doesn't have power steering. You know the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland? Yeah. That is exactly what this is like. You know, we're like, ba -boom, ba -boom. Yeah, that's one cool thing about being back in Europe is all the fresh bread, man. Ugh, we're gonna gain a lot of weight here. Delivery for the buds. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Hi, baby. This is technically supposed to be our lunch, but free game. <laughs> You're definitely getting into your hungry phase of pregnancy. Yes. <laughs> I'm an eating monster right now. <laughs> Man, it's interesting that all the cars here are smaller. Also, the spaces are a lot smaller. The whole scale of everything is so much smaller than I'm used to, you know? First 
cow sighting, buddy. Nice. I think this is a pregnant lady crossing. Beware, pregnant ladies walking around, don't run into them. I don't think so. <laughs> Alcohol free, baby. The first stop on our road trip would be the caldera, which is basically the volcanic crater on the top of the island's highest peak. But do you smell that? It's just like the sweet scent of flowers all around. <laughs> I was gonna say, all I smell is like the clutch that I'm burning oh, out yeah? right now. <laughs> a little bit of a wardrobe change. Yep. Because it's a little chilly in the clouds. It's a little wet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Go in, buddy. Ooh. Wow, bud, you're not gonna believe this view. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Just use your imagination. Mm -hmm. I bet you it's so beautiful. <laughs> Think about it this way, buddy. Yeah. A lot of people don't get to see this. That's true, this is a very rare thing to see. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, it's nice of them to have a picture of what it looks like normally. And you can see it's pretty big relative to the size of the island. Okay, we got cows, buddy. It got a stampede. Wow, hi. <laughs> oh, don't move. Then they like, don't know what to do. This is like, what did I miss? What was it? All right, transitioning to dirt roads. Can you handle it, bud? I think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> wow, well this is a nice view compared to yeah. the caldera. Do you feel so European right now? Mm, I do and it feels so good. Essa comida é muito boa. Muito boa. Muito boa. Essa comida é muito boa. Muito suave. <laughs> All right, so we are here at the Capelinos, Cape Linos. I think Capelinos. Uh, Capelinos is right. Volcano Park area. And it's really beautiful, really cool. But we're going to go check out the Volcano Museum, which is underground. It's so underground that nobody else even knows about it. Oh, no. Wow, I was not expecting this. It looks like a secret Austin Powers den. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my underground lair. We've got our own private movie theater. You want to make out? Whoa, hey, these seats are nice. <laughs> and the islands. <laughs> Buddy, I feel like I'm in the Azores. I know, me too. Nearly 35 million years ago, all super they've got my like heaters. In this exhibit, we learn that although many island groups around the world are formed by volcanic processes similar to that in the Azores, the details of how these volcanoes formed and erupted make each island group really distinct. That's the earth melting and flowing and bubbling. Yeah, so I didn't realize this at all, but a lot of what we saw out there, like a lot of the terrain was actually just created by a volcano in 1957, 1958. The lighthouse out here was at the edge of the island before this all happened. Yeah, and so here you can see like the new island was formed and it wasn't quite connected to the mainland yet. Oh wow, and you can see, oh my gosh, there's the active volcano in the middle of it. Yeah, so here they've got like a whole array of every single step of how this new peninsula was made. Pretty cool to see each little part of the process. Yeah, you can see behind us is the lighthouse. So this was the edge of the land and then that whole thing just blew out of the ocean, basically. Like Pretty this. cool. Buddy, sometimes you gotta go down to go up, wow. like a volcano. Wow, I gotta say, Sailing across the Atlantic, not a great way to up your cardio game. <laughs> well, it feels like you're walking out over the land. It's a little trippy. Whoa. Hold it on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a better sense of like what's old and what's new here. So like those cliffs, old cliffs. That's old news. This hill, new. Yeah, and you can definitely tell because this land is all ashy and black and dusty. And then you look beyond it and that's the actual like landscape that's been here for longer. I think 
he has a death wish. <laughs> it's like every cliff we come to, he sprints to the edge of it, and I'm like. And then like Tokyo drifts yeah. right up to it. Are you king of the rock? Yes, you are. <laughs> I own this mountain. <laughs> Man, this is an amazing view. Yeah, I keep thinking about how these cliffs were the first thing that we saw after the Atlantic crossing. Orlando! <laughs> so it's cool to get to walk around on them and experience them yeah. with them having such a meaningful place in my memory. But we were just like right out there, right on the horizon, and we were like, oh man, I th I, we can see land, you know? <laughs>